Russia says it plans to stop investing in dollar-denominated assets through its sovereign wealth fund in response to rising US sanctions. Speaking at the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum in Moscow, Russian Finance Minister Anton Silvanov said the $186 billion national wealth fund will instead increase investments in the euro, Chinese yuan and gold. The announcement comes just days before Russian President Vladimir Putin meets his US counterpart Joe Biden in Geneva. Meanwhile, Moscow is trying to deepen economic ties with other countries, with more than 300 agreements being inked at this year's event. Participants are also debating the adoption of green technologies and sustainable business practices. But many Russian businesses say it could take decades to significantly reduce the economy's dependence on fossil fuels. Well, for more on this, let's bring in Andrew Forrest in St. Petersburg. He's chairman of Fortescue Metals Group and the Mindaru Foundation. Great to have you with us, uh, Andrew. Firstly, a bit about your background for our viewers who might not know, but uh, you're an Australian businessman who's perhaps best known for essentially breaking up the iron ore mining duopoly in Australia between uh, Rio Tinto and BHP through the founding of your own iron ore mining firm, Fortescue Metals Group. But you're at the St. Petersburg Forum to discuss the decarbonisation trend in light of the climate crisis. Can you tell us uh, what are you proposing and how do you square that with something as energy intensive as mining? Yeah, I think you always trust what someone does more than what they say. So you're right. I confess I'm a heavy emitting carbon company, but we're doing something about it. And we're doing something about it immediately. We're converting our ships to green ammonia, zero carbon, zero sulfur, our trains to green ammonia, our trucks to uh, green hydrogen batteries. We're working across the board to be the first heavy emitting, heavy manufacturing company to go completely green by 2030. Tell you the truth, I think we'll do it quicker than that. But in the process, we're setting up a massive green hydrogen supply chain to say to companies like ours all over the world, you can go green too. If you import green hydrogen or if you make it yourself, you actually have no excuse. Airplanes, ships, fertilizers, steel making you have no excuse but to go green now. Okay, now can I talk uh, more about uh, FMG, your Fortescue business? Because we know the pandemic has battered many industries across the globe. But uh, surprisingly, the price of iron ore has remained quite robust uh, throughout this crisis. How has your business fared throughout the pandemic? Look, it, it's fared well because we took the, the significant investment and strict discipline around the responsibility the government gave us to stay open, to stay operating during the entirety of the pandemic. And when I was working very hard with my 15,000 teammates to turn Fortescue green, I needed them all there. I needed them all on the train. And uh, so much of last year, while my teammates were busily turning Fortescue green, I went to visit 47 different countries to make sure there was enough green energy to ensure that green hydrogen and green energy could supply the world for all time. And the message here in St. Petersburg is being taken very well. Now, on this program, we've been covering the uh, increasing uh, trade dispute between Australia and China. It started off as a political one. Uh, Australia demanded initially an inquiry into the origins of the coronavirus pandemic. And since then, Beijing has imposed tariffs on Australian goods. It's cut uh, Australian imports. Uh, your business, Fortescue, uh, relies heavily on shipping iron ore to China. You've also got farming interests, which uh, deals a lot with China. Uh, are you worried about the state of uh, the relationship between Australia and China and what needs to be done to fix it? Well, look, thank you for the question. I can only talk from a personal perspective. I believe the national interest of both China and Australia is that we make peace with each other, that, that we, are, uh, we re quickly resume good relations. But I can say this. I'm at peace. I'm, I have friendly relations with every country in the world, including, of course, China. But I am at war. I'm at war against global warming. And therefore, to, to get this job done, to bring global warming to an end, we need businesses, we need political policies all over the world to come together and say, actually, we want to continue our existence on this beautiful Mother Earth we have. We're going to have to bring in green hydrogen 
and we're going to have to stop global warming. Now, Andrew, you're also known as one of Australia's biggest philanthropists. So you set up your Mindaroo Foundation initially uh, as a way to tackle the scourge of modern day slavery. Can you tell us uh, how bad is uh, that situation right now and what needs to be done to tackle it? Well, look, it's probably at the worst that it's ever been. And the COVID-19 pandemic across the world has unfortunately increased poverty in so many places. So I've just come through Jordan. I've come through many other places in the world. And I'm on the lookout for forced marriage. I'm on the lookout for child marriage. All of these things define slavery. And women, um, obviously, uh, the, the, the part of our beautiful human race which suffers the most, they are copying it. And we just have to stand up and say enough is enough. Child marriage, forced marriage is slavery. One in 130 women, that's a terrible statistic. One in 130 women in the world suffer slavery. We cannot live with that injustice on our human race. We must all rise up against it. We must not make excuses. When we know that there's forced labor, when we think there might be forced labor, say in the fishing industry or in the construction industry or child marriage or forced marriage, there's no excuses. You can't blame religion. It's slavery. Okay, Andrew Forrest, we will have to leave it there, but thank you so much again for joining us on the program. <laughs>